How to Be Orange, Chapter 22, Dutch Service. An oxymoron? The quote, The Dutch are historically a non-hierarchical society. Since they overthrew the Spanish in the 1500s, they make it a point not to take orders from anyone. Ton Heiberg's Royal Tropical Institute. The term Dutch service can be an oxymoron. In keeping with their non-hierarchical tradition, the rationale of Dutch service is often, don't tell me what to do. In Dutch restaurants, I have had the following conversations. Me, excuse me, is it possible to turn up the heat a bit? The waiter, why? Me, I'm cold. Waiter, I don't think so. Me, excuse me, could I send this back to the kitchen? Waiter. Why? Me. I think it's not cooked properly. Waiter. Yes, it is. Me. Check, please. Waiter. Cleaning behind the bar, avoiding all eye contact. Me. Hello, can we have the bill, please? Waiter. Now going for a smoke break, avoiding all eye contact. Me. Please, can we pay? Waiter. Eventually delivers the check. Me. Paying. Ha! Huh, finally. We could have walked out about three times by now. Waiter, angrily, well, why didn't you then? In the Netherlands, the client is king, just not the boss. It's funny, just like the Dutch king. I'd always thought that America was a land of rugged, do-it-yourself types, and Europe was more about overbearing waitstaff. But in fact, it's America where you're bombarded with, can I help you? And in the Netherlands, when you want to order... You're on your own. On a sunny day in Amsterdam, the work just stops as everyone makes their way to a cafe terrace. Everyone is drinking and soaking up the sun, and there's probably someone smoking right next to you, and you can't actually get a drink because the one next to you with the cigarette is probably your waiter. Shouldn't they be serving drinks? Nah, the sun is out. Where do the Dutch learn their customer service skills? Well, there's actually quite a lot of training. For the hospitality industry, for example, there's the Hotel School in Amsterdam West. It's the one where the smoking area is located right outside the front entrance. So for anyone passing by, it appears that an integral part of service training is the smoke break. The very term Dutch hospitality can get you into trouble. Even when people invite you over, it's by appointment only. I've met Dutch people who have said, oh, you simply must come visit sometime but make sure you don't drop in unannounced. When I first got here, I took up my neighbor's offer to drop in sometime, but they were about to have dinner. No problem, they said. We're eating our dinner, but you can sit in the other room and read a magazine. Smells good, huh? The concept of tipping is quite different in America and the Netherlands, too. One of our favorite places in the Netherlands is Café Restaurant Amsterdam. We'll frequently go there after returning from a trip to the States. Our servers there are attentive, and they work as a team. When we ate there last, I was paying the bill, and my American tipping instincts took over. Okay, 15% of 68 euros. Uh, Let's just round upward. Uh, Maybe I'll give 80 euros just to be safe. But my wife protested. No, they'll think you're trying to be some kind of rich poser asshole. Just round up. I said, round up? That's only 70 euros. Perfect, she said. But that's two euros tip on a bill of 68. And sure enough, when I gave the tip of two euros, they looked genuinely surprised and said, thank you. Whereas in America, they would have tried to claw my eyes out. In America, the sales stereotype is ABC, always be closing. In the Netherlands, it's just a bit different. My wife got a gift coupon to shop at a parfumerie. It was full of handmade scents and little cards for spraying and testing all the perfumes. After a few minutes, the shopkeeper came up and said, Can you please spray that outside? I have to work in here all day, and it gives me a headache. It was suggested that perhaps this woman might want to find another line of work. But as it turns out, she didn't just work in the shop. She was the owner. A friend of mine was trying on boots in The Hague. She finally found the pair she was looking for, but the man behind the counter announced, we're almost closed. My friend asked if she could just check if they had the right size. 
The shopkeeper returned with the right-sized boots, and my friend wanted to try them on. So she took off her shoes and tried on the left boot when the shopkeeper turned off the lights. We're closing, he said. Oh, my friend said. Well, I guess I'll just quickly try on the other boot. I said we're closed. My friend protested. Okay, well, I won't try them on. I'll just buy them. Can I pay for them right now? No, the cash register is shut down. But I want to buy the boots, she said. Then you should have come earlier, was the response. And he kicked her out of the shop. Sometimes making a sale is not as important as shaming your customer. My father was staying at a bed and breakfast in the Jordan in Amsterdam. The owner was apparently a former psychotherapist. This is what my father found out when he was staying there. My dad reported many interesting chats in the mornings when the owner would put out a traditional Dutch breakfast and then just observe my father as he ate. At the end of his stay, the owner asked my father if he would like to come back and stay again at this bed and breakfast. My father said, oh, sure. It was very nice. I had a great time. I think I might come back and stay here again. The owner looked him straight in the eye and said, no, you won't. Turns out he was right. I was entering a cafe once and opened the door for a Dutch woman. She was so taken aback by my gesture that she stopped in her tracks and said, I'm not going to fuck you. But there are signs of improvement. A glass of tap water will now be provided free of charge at the cafe these days. Not long ago, tap water was inexplicably off limits. A new generation of Dutch retail staff seem to care a bit more about their work. And I've personally given customer friendliness trainings to Schiphol Airport duty-free staff. <laughs> Can't vouch for any results there. It's also true that American service is not always so admirable. I was expecting more American-style service when I went to New York City recently, but the stereotypes don't always hold true. There are definitely a couple of places in Manhattan where a New York minute translates into a quarter of an hour. The bike rental shop guys were quite friendly, but they were in a different time zone. And we even found a Belgian beer place in Manhattan serving frites with mayonnaise. Beer? Frites? And bad service? Huh. Why did I leave Europe? And of course, Dutch people point out the negative stereotypes about American service. Americans say, have a nice day, and how are you doing? And they don't really care. And it's kind of true. But there's one thing worse when they actually do care. I was back in the U.S. for a mini family reunion. It was a theme restaurant outside Chicago with my dad and my brothers, whom I hadn't seen in two years. We got a back room all to ourselves. It was great. The only problem was a little attention-starved freak called our waitress. Hi, my name is Ariel. I'll be your server today. If there's anything you need at any point, feel free to let me know. Would you like to hear our specials today? No, we said. Okay, well, here they are anyway. And she went on to tell us the whole menu. We ordered as quickly as possible so I could catch up with my brothers. One of them is a screenwriter in L.A. I asked, is it true that your script is getting financed and you're going to direct? I want to hear more. But here was Ariel again. How's everything with your meals? Now, granted, this is a question that you never get to hear in a Dutch restaurant until after the meal. The term heeft het gesmaakt means, did it taste good? But it really means, I hope you're done because I'm taking your plate. For fun, you can tell them the food was not perfect and maybe even give them a message for the kitchen, such as too much salt. And the Dutch waiters will stand there staring at you until you get your line right. You're supposed to say, it was lecker. Again, just as I was getting caught up with my brother, here was Ariel again. Did you guys want to order any extra fries or side dishes at this time? No, thank you. Anyway, my brother was already doing some casting for his new movie, and he was getting some interest from some big names. Hi, do you guys want any refills on your drinks? These drinks were enormous already. I felt like I was getting diabetes just looking at this cola. No, thank you. My brother told me that it's an Oscar winner who wants to star in his movie. Who was it? Here comes Ariel again. I went ahead and brought you guys some more refills just in case because the refills, they're free. Let me just make some room for you. And it was I who decided to use my Dutch bluntness. I said, you know what? We don't want drinks right now. We just want a chance to finish our conversation. I don't know if you can tell, but we're having a little family reunion. Ariel chimed in. Oh, what a family reunion. That's nice. My family is all from right around here, so we see each other constantly. I guess you could say we have a family reunion all the time. My brother says he wants to go away to school. 
I couldn't believe it. Why on earth did she think I wanted to skip hearing about my own family so I could hear about hers? I said, sorry, maybe I've been unclear. I don't get to see these guys very often. I live in Amsterdam. <sighs> Wrong move. Ariel continued, oh, Amsterdam. Oh, I'd love to go to Amsterdam. I keep saying I have to get over there someday to see Amsterdam because that's my name, Ariel. And I just have to see that statue of the Little Mermaid. I had to admit, at that point, I was dying to get back to Dutch service. I was dying to ask for a drink and have a waiter tell me, fuck off. There is something about Dutch service that I've found to be integral to the Dutch experience. I remember the day I had this realization. It was when we had to get a new washing machine. Here's the story. Our old washing machine broke down, so we went to the Wit Goed store, the white good store. If the appliances are white and good, they've got them. We shopped around for different brands, and we ended up doing what every good Dutch couple does. We bought a German machine. It was the heaviest. We told them at the store, Installing it may be tricky. It's going to have to go past the bathtub, over a toilet, into a little nook. No problem, was the answer. They'll even take the old one away. That's the job of our service team. <sighs> service team. When I hear this term in the Netherlands, it sets off warning bells and red flags. Anytime you hear the words service and team in Dutch, there's trouble. We were told it should be possible. It sounded good enough. So the service team showed up and realized that our washing machine, it's not easy to get to. It lives in the back corner of our bathroom. We actually have a bathtub and a toilet in the same room, which is not common. So when the service team surveyed the scene, we heard that classic Dutch phrase, nah, that is not possible, which means, oh, it's possible. But first, I like to say no before I actually think about it. My first instinct was to play the role of the self-righteous American. Well, they said at the store that it should be possible, and what about customer satisfaction? I mean, I might give you a bad rating, and I'm going to talk to your manager, and we are paying you, aren't we? But then it struck me. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Maybe the whole essence of Dutch communication is just a different tone. I told my wife, stand back, honey. I'm going to try to communicate with them. She said, just please don't do it in Dutch. But I slumped myself down next to the delivery guys. I said, wow. Yeah, this must suck for you. Big heavy washing machine. You guys have to lift it past the toilet and up over the, yeah, into the back nook. And you probably have to lift heavy stuff all day, don't you? Huh. Yeah, it must be tough. You know, you know what they said at the store? They said it would be possible. But now I see it's not possible. So. Uh, I guess you can go. I mean, I guess I'll just have to do it myself. I don't know. I might hurt my back. I could call my neighbor to help. But, you know, what if he gets hurt? And then I need uh, to pay his insurance or something. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe you guys just better take it back. Take it back to the truck. Return it to the store. I guess we'll just forget about it. They looked at each other as if to say, wow, that was really good complaining. And they thought about it for a moment and said, well, yeah, we could give it a try. And sure enough, bam, it was done. That is how to really communicate with the Dutch. And they don't teach you that in the Inbrugerings Cursus. <laughs>